Okay, we just had a short break while Melbourne wrestler Jim Dopp had some medical attention. And we seem to have another short delay. Okay, yeah, we, we uh, lost our power for a minute there. And while we were away, Jim Dopp was able to uh, pull a reversal on Pete Gonslick and take the lead two to one. Gonslick, though, may have a possible turnaround if he can hold on. He's got to try, he's got to get out. He's trailing two to one. 25 seconds left. If he doesn't get out, that'll mean three more points for the Milburn team. Another stalemate called. And Dopp gets his, his, head, his head protector back. Those head protectors are very important. Yeah, they prevent the wrestler's uh, ears from rubbing against the mat, and uh, which could cause some injury to the uh, of the year. That's very true. 15 seconds. Gonsley's got to get out. Jim Dobb trying to hold him down. He's only got seven more seconds to go. And it looks like Dobb is going to pull it out. Three more points for Melbourne. A very close match. Certainly the closest one we've had today. And Dopke is awarded an extra point for riding time. Those uh, three points that were awarded on the default earlier in the match loom very big now. New Providence needs many pins. They've got to come back very strong. Okay, now at 141 pounds, we have Steve Knobs of New Providence against Barry Eisler from Milburn. Steve Knobs from New Providence. Milburn now leading New Providence by a score of 18 to 9. Nobs picking up two points. But Eisler may have a chance to break away. Knob is in very deep at the single leg. Eisler is trying very hard to get out of bounds. Okay, so they will start up again with Knobs on the offensive position and Eisler on the defensive. New Providence in the green and gold. Milburn in the blue with white trim. Aside from the first two matches that went to New Providence, Milburn has won the last four. Just recapping so far, we had Dave Moniz against Matt Silverberg in the 101 pound weight class. Moniz won that match, picked up five points for New Providence, won it very handily. Bob Dumas of New Providence in the 108 defeated Adam Weiss to pick up four more points. But New Providence had nine to nothing, but, but Ted Schlein picked up six points for Milburn. I believe that was when they had the default. Okay, no, that was the pin. And the next match was the default with Kevin Ellis of Milburn picking up six points against Mike Pausikoff. That was that made it 12 to 9 Milburn. Then it was Al Martino picking up three against Ethan Zimmer, 15 to 9 Milburn. And in the match we just saw completed, Jim Dopp at 135 pounds, defeating Pete Gonslick. Okay, and that's the end of the first period with Steve Knobs leading Barry Eisler two to nothing. I would say that if Knobs loses this match, I think Milburn's going to win it. Yeah, New Providence needs pins. Uh, not only has to win this match, they've got to win it big. They're looking for a pin or at least a. Uh, five-point decision. Okay, let's see what happens. The second period begins with knobs on top and Eisler on the bottom.
Tom's trying to, before to reach in, to pull the arms down. Eisler trying hard to break his hold on his other arm. Nobs driving forward. Well, Nobs pulling him over, trying to pin his shoulders down. Shoulders are, are what has to uh, be touching the mat for a pin to be called. The Providence Fest was given two back points for the tilt when he tilted uh, the Milburn wrestler to the mat. Okay, so now Nobbs leads Barry Eisler four to nothing. Lou, can you tell us about the count? That seems to be a kind of a confusing issue like uh, what what does the referee do when he does when he moves his hand like that well you're you can uh, be given two points or three points in a near fall it all depends on how long you have you hold your opponent uh, back to the mat now in order to get a near fall you have to have one shoulder on the mat and the other shoulder has to break a plane of 45 degrees now the referee starts counting if he counts up to five that's when you're awarded three Anything less than that, you get two. Okay, in a match we saw earlier today, we had a pin called very quickly. Uh, it's down for almost two seconds. I guess that's all the time you really need to call a pin. Two seconds, yeah. That's another thing a lot of people aren't too much in favor about all the time the referee calls a pin, you know. You gotta be right up there to see it. It's gotta be kind of difficult for people out in the stands to really get a good view of it. So. Uh, in order to pin the guy, you have to have his shoulder blades on the mat for two seconds. A lot of people have the idea that it's just the, the top of the shoulders. You could ha actually have your guy's uh, man resting on his shoulders and not be pinned. He has to be on those shoulder blades. Yeah, some very interesting uh, refereeing information from Lou Del Monte. There's a referee. Steve Knobs on the bottom may have a reversal here. You can see he almost had the one shoulder down, but but uh, Eisler was able to pick up and come back, and he's back on top. Knobs leading four to nothing, though. Knobs trying to push him over. Just set out and tried a Gazzoni there. He may have done it. He's got have a pin. The Comets needs the pin badly here. Two points for Knobs. And a possible pin. They need it. 50 seconds, so he's got time. But Eiser pulls out. All right, and that was three more points. Oh, I'm sorry. That was... Uh, yeah, okay, three more points for Knobs. Seven to nothing. Okay, there's a mistake on the scoreboard. I believe it's supposed to be nine to nothing. The scoreboard says seven to, oh, okay, now it's been changed. Nine to nothing in favor of Knobs. Okay, so this, so Joe, this will mean, uh, with just uh, seven, six seconds, this will mean four or five points for New Providence. Um, well, just got one point for Milburn. I'm not sure what the score is. So we finish up at nine to one, maybe, I believe, ten to one with the riding time. It's a four-point uh, decision, but the pin was really important. Steve Knobs coming very close to a pin. That'll... Uh, Bring New Providence's total up to 13. They're still five points down. Very big, big match here. Another big match. Seems like all of them are big matches, but they're uh, they're all very important. John's a very physical, very tough, uh, aggressive wrestler. He has a lot of pins, but he's also um, 
gained a lot of finesse this year. Uh, he has lost some key bouts, but uh, if anybody can turn it around for New Providence, this boy can. And it's very important to get a pen here. That's right. You, you can see by that opening few seconds, he's a very aggressive wrestler. And uh, I remember seeing him earlier this year on the football team. He's, uh, I think, one of the uh, halfbacks. He's one of the. Uh, he was a fullback on the uh, New Providence uh, football team and quite an outstanding fullback. A fullback, right. Now, I remember he scored, uh, I believe it was four or five touchdowns. Very nice move on both parts, on, on both boys. So, uh, nice try for reversal and a counter, so no points were scored. It's been a very exciting match so far this afternoon. We've seen some very close individual matches as well. in the first period. John Liberato of New Providence in the green and gold. Rob Galatelli of Milburn in the blue. And Galatelli picks up two points for a takedown. Kelly doesn't look that strong, but he is. Okay, coming to the end of the first period with Rob Galatelli of Milburn, two points ahead of John Liberato. And that's how they will start the second period. This is the 148 pound weight class. We will have four more matches after this. Liberato on the bottom. Rob Galatelli, the lefty on the top. Liberato comes up quickly and picks up a point, but may have that erased. trying to get out of bounds, and he does. But, uh, okay, no, Galatelli was awarded two points on that. So he will, he was awarded the top spot. That was a pretty late call there for the takedown by the ref. The guy was, the guy was sitting right there inside on his thighs the whole time. He waited until they almost started moving out of bounds, and he gave him the tip. It was kind of a good call, but it just seemed like he gave it late. Hey, okay, Liberato picking up a point on the escape. Shooting in for the barrel, and he got stuck there, but he came out of it. So they will start again, neutral position. Liberato trailing Galatelli of Milburn, 4-2. Minute 20 left in the second period. Two points for Liberato. And after two were awarded to Galatelli, makes the score 6 4 now. Looks like trying yeah. to predict the last period coming up is going to be pretty exciting. Oh, I think so. Liberato's that type of wrestler where he kind of comes on the last period. Okay, one point awarded to Galatelli. They'll start in neutral. This type of wrestler when he's down on points, so he goes all out. Points. First, uh, Galatelli overrode Liberato, and then it was vice versa. All right, Liberato uh, made a nice Grammy there on his reversal. 
Following through and came out nice for the wrist arm. New Providence coach Phil Esposito. Thirty-five seconds. Second period. Dorado yeah. may have two. Oh, that was close. A tough call. That could have gone to New Providence. Example there, the type of wrestler I was just saying about, about Liberato. He knows he's got to win here. He's going to go all out. Something you can't ask for from a, from a wrestler as a coach. Galatelli on top. He may have it. And they'll pin. What a turnaround in the last seconds. Stopped with just two seconds left in the second period. If, if Liberato could have held on for two more seconds, he might have avoided a pin. Phil Esposito out talking with the referee. I'm sure he wasn't too pleased about that. But it was most assuredly a pin. Liberato was hanging onto his head on the takedown there. That's what he kind of pinned himself. Okay. This is another very important match. We have Bob Ginelli for New Providence and Ken Miller for Milburn. Ken is one of the co-captains of the Millers. This is the 158-pound weight class. New Providence now trailing 24 to 13. If they don't, if they don't win this, they probably will lose the match. It's gonna be tough for them now. That was a big match for Milburn right there. It was a real big one. I showed you what can happen in the, just a few seconds. And here we have Miller picking up two points for a takedown. With just 30 seconds gone by in the first period. bar is pretty close to a chicken wing there. You got that bar in there, you have to keep your arm straight across the man's back. New Providence bench very quiet right now. They know that Bob has to win this one. Bob Ginelli, another of the uh, football players. He was one of the halfbacks. Twenty twenty-five seconds left, first period. Stalemate brought back to the center. Okay, Joe, let's take a look at this. We have, after this match, we'll have three matches. So the Providence would have to win all three. And by pins, in order to take this out, if they lose here, it's going to be very tough. Okay, so if, if Milburn can win, if, if Milburn can win one more match, and New Providence would, would definitely have to come up with three pins for, for them, or, or two pins and a near pin. We've said every match here has been critical. It just seems that way. These are two fine teams. And uh, Milburn looks to be the superior team right now. Well, New Providence has had some bad breaks today. Just uh, the call on the default and, of course, on the... The pin we just saw with just two seconds left in the in the period, if he had held out two more seconds. Ken Miller from Milburn trying to turn Bob Ginelli over. Two points.
Ken Miller of the Milburn Millers. Picking up two more points, making it four to nothing. Minute 18 left in the second period. Ken Miller, a very strong wrestler from last year. Who we saw in some of the matches last year. He was one of the wrestlers that even when some of his teammates lost, he would be the one to pick up a victory. Lou, what would you say that call was? Potentially dangerous. The way he had the arm bars in there. His uh, determination of where the uh, direction the guy's arms are going. In. If you start turning a guy over in an arm bar and his arm's moving forward up towards his head, that's potentially dangerous. Okay, no points awarded, however. That's, that's a warning, correct? Right. The second time it's points, right? No, it won't be points the second time. It's just the, what it is, what I said. It's just called potentially dangerous. Anytime a referee at all thinks any type of a hold is going to cause any type of uh, harm to one of the wrestlers or he's going to get injured, 30 seconds. you automatically can stop it and call it potentially dangerous. Okay. Ginelli trying to get out. He's got to get out if he's going to make, score any points. Ken Miller trying to make sure that he doesn't get out. Ginelli looking like he's in some pain. And that'll do it for the second period. I think you'll see that most of the boys uh, it's really not a it's not not pain like we like we think of it. It's just that these boys are working so hard and they're using so much strength because this is a really very physical sport uh, that uh, it gives you that impression. But as you can see, both boys have just returned to the circle and they're they're all set to go at it again. Just underway in the second period of the 158-pound wrestling match between Ken Miller of Milburn in the blue and Bob Ginelli of New Providence in the green and yellow. I'd like to remind you, you're watching this through the facility of Communities on Cable, Channel PA2. And I'm Dave Karate, along with Joe Pickton and Lou Del Monte from the New Providence warning High School Gym. A warning was just given to the New Providence wrestler for uh, stalling on the bottom, not initiating any move to try and get out. Okay. Miller on an unusual kind of hold. The cradle, which he'll try to put Ginelli to his back. And uh, beginning with the count. That'll probably that'll come out to three points at least for Miller. And it is three points. Seven to nothing in favor of Miller. If, if uh, Janelli gets pinned, that would close the door on New Providence's chances of coming back. And Ginelli almost had a chance to get out there, but it's brought out of bounds. 12 seconds left in the final period. Okay, and that'll do it for this match. Milburn will pick up another three points. It'll be four points. Okay, so that puts Milburn in front by 15 with three matches left to go, which means a pin at six points. With, uh, New Providence will have to come out with two pins and a decision to tie. 
Okay, and at 170, I'm sorry, go ahead. Usually at this juncture when a uh, team is this far behind, they're working very hard for the pin. They uh, generally lead to a lot of mistakes and you'll see pins for the other side. It's kind of like a hockey game where the uh, losing team pulls the goalie, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fred Gagan of New Providence at 170 pounds against Hans Willis of Milburn. Gagan's got to win this by a pin for New Providence to even stay alive. Two points for Gagan. And he may have a pin. Trying to put him over. New Providence needs it badly. Gagan trying to hold him down. Willis trying. Got to stop him from getting a pin. See very closely there. He may have it. 30 seconds, first period. Hey, and three points awarded to Fred Gagan. After two were awarded earlier, so it's now five to nothing in favor of New Providence wrestler. But a decision still will not do them much good. Okay, so Gagan will take the uh, defensive position. Hans Willis will take the top. Dagan, now on the bottom. The count going for Hans Willis. Dagan's got to hold on. Got to try and get out. And it looks like he may. Willis trying to hold him down. Now, before he didn't, he was still on his legs. Here's a position here, right at the moment, when I was talking about before, pinning the guy. He's basically on his shoulders, but we can't get a good look at it. The other man's actually covering up his blades. Willis. Another six points for Milburn. After Gagan had taken a big lead early. I told you, as I mentioned before, this could happen because uh, New Providence has to go all out. They have no chance now. They're uh, much too far behind. Okay, that'll close it out for the uh, for the team match. We still have two more matches to go. This is the 188 pound weight class, the second to last. Doug Pastor of New Providence, another of the football players against Mark Adams of Milburn. It's been exciting, but Milburn has 
dominated a lot of the play. The last match was kind of funny. The province almost came out of there. It looked like they had the sure pin. Before you knew it, the province man got pinned. That's right. Milburn has definitely had the breaks today. No doubt about it. The team score now is 34, Milburn, and 13 for New Providence. So the best New Providence could do is to pick up 12 more points, which would make it 25, so they're well out of the match. Like you were just saying here about before, in a match like this, uh, the team that's going to usually win is going to one that gets the breaks. So far, Milburn's got two big breaks. They, got, they came out of the last three matches there with two pins. New Providence has done well this season. It's very tough to to suffer a loss like this. We've seen him against Summit and a couple of other teams and they've been very impressive. It's very tough to lose a match like this. I'm sure that in, on a different day, things could be different. Coach Esposito is doing a nice job with the kids this year. He really uh, has. As maybe you don't know, they got out uh, Donald Carpenter also as an assistant coach this year. He's gonna try and help promote, get out some more heavyweights. That's the biggest problem the province had in the last uh, few years. They always were a pretty equal team up and down the line, but all of a sudden they just didn't really get into real strong heavyweights. But lately, the reason why they probably haven't been doing much better is the heavyweights have been wrestling a lot more aggressive. So that's a tribute to the coach to get the best he can out of his wrestlers. That's but, true, and, and a heavyweight position is very important because if it's a close match, it can often decide the, the match. Right. Another reason, too, I uh, would have to say the problems is doing a much better recently too is uh, the fellow over here taking the pictures uh, Joe Picton he's done a uh, it's been a great great help to our program the past couple of years he's he's really uh, getting our younger program as you know in the province has a junior wrestling team we've had it for the last seven years and uh, just recently like I said the last couple of years we got Joe Picton here to come out and help us out he's been taking the kids out to all kinds of tournaments all year long and He's uh, been getting one big thing done. He's getting a lot of the parents involved. A lot of people don't realize that, but uh, in wrestling, you don't get a, the backing. You're going to be in trouble. That's very true, and it's very, uh, very important to have that youth program to develop the wrestlers early and bring them up to the high school ranks better prepared. And uh, along with... Uh, with helping with the wrestling, he's also been helping with with the uh, the, the TV end. As uh, he's with us today, and he's also running our camera. So, uh, and he's run the camera for many of, of the other events you see here on Channel PA too. So we thank Joe very much. Okay, this match: Mark Adams of Milburn and, and Doug Pastor of New Providence. Early in the uh, second period. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize the psychology involved in this sport because uh, some of the matches that New Providence felt they were surely going to win in the upper weights have now kind of turned around since uh, the forfeit. As, as you know, the uh, default uh, seemed to turn the tide for uh, Milburn, and uh, they can't seem to do any wrong, and a lot of their kids are wrestling above their heads and the new providence wrestlers seem to realize the match is out of reach and that's true it was it was those three points that put new providence to behind to stay okay while we were talking there uh, mark adams picked up three points There again, you could see, uh, maybe this is just the referee style, but it seemed like he took quite a long time there to call stolen. Uh, actually, I thought both men should have got called for stolen there. Neither men were making any type of movement at all. Well, as you said before, Lou, it is, a lot of it is left up to the discretion of the referee. So. That's one of the biggest things in the last, uh, excuse me, the, the past couple of years they've been trying to, uh, pick up on and that's the uh, the actual wrestling out there on the mat 
get more movement going on. Less riding and stall. That's one of the big reasons uh, a lot of people want to see the t riding time done away with. Okay, here we have an injury timeout called here. What are the rules as regard? Tells you so. That's a good point. I don't think too many people would realize that. Okay, then we'll be resuming action here. Adams on top, and Pastor on the bottom. Pioneer's definitely not getting the brakes today. And, and it's, it's unfortunately, and it, I'm sure it could have been a, a lot closer match if, if some little things didn't go wrong. Uh, this period was just about to end, and as it does, Mark Adams will take a 5-0 lead into the final third period. Uh, a match that seemed to be very close on paper, uh, as I mentioned before, completely turned around. The, the steam seems to have gone out of the, uh, the Providence bench, and Milburn just can't seem to do anything wrong today, and uh, that's the way this sport is. Well, many people don't realize it. It isn't an individual sport, but it, uh, it's also a team sport, and one man's loss uh, can have a, a very deep psychological effect on the entire team, and that's what happened here today. That's very true. Pastor came up and Gazzoni out of there. All he's got to do now is finish the move. He started it, went halfway through it, but he didn't finish up. That's why he didn't get the reversal. Doug Pastor, another of the football players we saw this fall. Very strong defensive football player. And a very strong wrestler as well. Mark Adams, I believe, is also on the Milburn football team. I may be mistaken. Two points awarded to Adams. He has now uh, scored seven to one. seconds now in the final period Mark Adams and Milburn in the blue leading Doug Pastor seven to one seven to two Pastor picked up a point for Stalin guess we didn't get a chance to say how good a job Bill Myron has done with his Milburn players this year. They've been strong in the past, but uh, this year they look better than ever. Okay, and this match will end with Adams picking up a 7-2 decision and three points. That'll make it 37-13. Now we have the big guys. We have, for Milburn, Merrick Karski. Very tough, heavyweight. And for New Providence, 290-pound John Ioannis. John has just come out for uh, wrestling this year. He's a junior, but he's never wrestled before this year. In fact, he even came out late. And he's really starting to get into things. He's up against a real tough guy here in this Karski. He's got quite a bit of experience and is a really 
good heavyweight. Karski looks uh, quite a few pounds lighter, though. Yeah, there's no question about it. I think John is uh, running between 270 and 280, and Karski looks like he's around 2, 225, maybe 230 tops. Uh, I might even be giving him more than that. But uh, sometimes it's not always the weight. Oh, yeah. See right there. But uh, regardless of how this match turns out, I think uh, you'll be hearing uh, a lot more from John because, as like I said, he's only uh, really a uh, novice at the sport. He just came out uh, about a uh, quarter way through the season for the first time, and uh, I think he's really done quite well. You know, he really hasn't given up, and uh, you never can tell what'll happen here. It's true. I remember they had him listed in the uh, football lineup as 290, and uh, I believe he was one of the starting defensive tackles. Right, he was. I think he slimmed down a little bit for wrestling, and uh, it seems to uh, have worked out for him because he's gotten a little, certainly has gotten quicker. Usually the big guys can't move around too much when yeah. you see him, but these two fellows seem to be moving pretty quickly. Merrick Karski, a heavyweight from Melbourne. And John Ioannis, heavyweight for New Province. The match has gone to Melbourne today. It's been a tough one, especially a tough one for New Providence to lose. The score now 37 to 13 in favor of Melbourne. And this individual match, two to one in favor of Karski. Twenty five seconds in the first period. Ran is covering uh, Radikarski covering the face. Fairly even first period. You can see there where the referee uh, he gave the province a point before. Uh, once you have the single leg grapevine in, which the guy from Milburn had on the guy from the Providence, you cannot just ride with the legs. You must immediately make a move to turn the man over. Or else you get called for stalling like you did. It's more so than when you don't have the leg in. That's the one big thing about uh, high, high school wrestling, especially college wrestling. And uh, this is a very good example of that. You know, not just weight, not just size, not just brute strength. More than that, to be a good wrestler, it takes strategy. You have to have the moves. Probably the biggest thing you gotta have is the confidence. Karski attempting a pin here. He picked up two points on the takedown. You don't have the confidence that every time you go out and wrestle, no matter who it is, you want to go out there and tear that guy up and go for that pin. That's what he did. He got a pin. Six more points for New Milburn. Marikarski picking up a pin. At, uh, that would be at 38 seconds of the second period. The big thing that hurt there was the inexperience of New Providence heavyweight. He's only been out for the past month, and uh, you can see as soon as the guy from Milburn stuck the legs in on him, he just didn't know what to do. He just never been through that situation before. I probably heard him more right there. But uh, you're gonna hear some good things about this heavyweight. He's he's working hard in practice, and he's pretty aggressive. As soon as he starts learning some things, you're gonna start hearing some things about it. Well, we hope so, and it's been a good match. New Providence, unfortunately, on the losing side. Milburn on the winning side, 43 to 13. I'm um, with Coach Phil Esposito. Coach, a very tough loss. I'm sure you, you know you had some bad breaks. What happened? Well, I think the uh, key to match was uh, when we were disqualified at 122. And uh, our kids after that, our whole bench, they just, I could see it in their faces. They just, you know, because we knew that was a key bout. And uh, I thought we had a shot at it at the time. 
Uh, it was a close match. Anybody could have won. And, uh, you know, that's one of those things. But I think that was a turning point of the match. And from then on, we just went downhill. But uh, they, uh, they all wrestled us. They were a better club than we were today. And uh, they wrestled tough. They were aggressive. And, uh, you don't know, have to give the Milburn team a lot of credit because they, uh, they earned a win. They did a nice job. Now if we can get Coach Myron in here. Here we have the victorious coach and, of course, the uh, coach who led the team to the Suburban Conference title. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I was pleased with the team today. The seniors have been doing a big job for us the whole year, leadership, you know, out of the man and otherwise. And I think we got good leadership, you know, out of the man today. I mean, Miller, Martino, Schlein came through with <clears throat> important wins for us and kept momentum going in the right places. And I think the rest of the team just responded to all that it got a little bit contagious after a while with amongst team members so we were happy you know, with that good did, did you feel you had the breaks um i, I think we, we was very happy that a lot of the post matches we ended up getting the falls and or that disqualifications but i really i, I wouldn't call them breaks um, coach coach esposito said that the turning point had to be the disqualification do you feel it was without a question that, that was a uh, a big boost to us, um, I'm sure his team felt a little down after that. Um, but, you know, our, I felt our, our kids, you know, they each, uh, we won a couple of tight matches today. And even some tight matches we ended up with some pins in. I just don't know. I, I think our kids would have done that regardless of this qualification or not. Um, well, congratulations on the Suburban Conference. Let me ask you one other question. Of course, next year you'll be going into the Skyline Conference or the uh, Northern Hills Conference, prov providing they go through with this That's appeal or whatever. That's a big if right now. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't know too much about that conference now. Um, the, the state has talked about mandating a couple extra teams in there be beyond the eight teams that were originally scheduled for the conference. Um, things at this point, I, I gather, are very much up in the air whether the conference is going to be materialized for next year or not. And I'm not sure what the competition is. They, they, could, they have some nice teams up there, rest and powers. Um, but again, we, we lose some, some quality teams from the Suburban Conference. The conference going to their mountain divisions going to, you know, has always been a good match between the two of us. And, you know, I think there's a pretty good chance we'll keep them on, I'm sure, you know, out, outside of a conference realm. I hope so, because it has been a very uh, good event every year, and, and uh, we're sorry we have to, to break it up this way, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of good competition in the new conference. Yes, I, well, there's one thing for sure. You're going to find competition wherever you go in the state nowadays. You just have to go to one conference or another and, and just walk into better roses. And, you know, they'll give us more than enough competition up in that new conference if it does materialize. Okay, well, thanks again, and congratulations on Suburban Conference win. You're, I'm sure you're very proud of your players. Uh, the, the team did a real nice job. I, I don't think any wrestler could have wrestled any better than they did today. And when that happens, you know, regardless of the outcome, that's really all coach can ask for. So. Okay, well, thank you again, and good luck next season. Thank you.